some some of you that will be coming along and maybe inspired to ride with us this summer as well. So um, I'm going to share with you a little bit about our rides. There we go. We've gone ahead. Uh, so this summer we're going to be offering four different rides. It's our seventh year of hosting these rides. So we're super excited and we've got lots, certainly lots of experience and uh, lots of great itineraries, old ones and uh, new ones that we develop every year that we're going to be bringing to you. So it is, uh, we do offer self-guided but supported rides and they're usually small groups. We don't uh, go over 45 riders usually and we have a number of people that join us as volunteer um, local ambassadors and volunteers that um, help us in other ways in the rides and staff like myself and my colleague Peter. And uh, they're usually centered over a weekend. They last usually two days. Sometimes we stretch it for three days when there's some really great riding in a certain area that we want to make the most of. So lots of information online about all our rides. Um, our rides do sell out early. Two of, our, two of the four rides are already sold out now. And uh, we do take very seriously uh, the COVID uh, restrictions that were uh, in place over the past two years and took all the precautions necessary that our riders felt totally safe. And we were very lucky actually to be uh, only have to cancel a couple of rides over the past two years um, because we keep them as, as small groups and uh, we have the accommodations uh, set out in place. Speaking of accommodations, a different type of accommodations, what's included in our rides? Well, the accommodations are breakfasts and lunches. We have amazing lunches. People rave about them. We always find some nice local deli, deli um, or caterer to supply us with those. Uh, we offer ride hydration and snack stops along the way and we have a sag wagon. So if something was to happen to your bike or you got too tired, um, wanted to just take a break uh, from riding, uh, we can come around and pick you up and also provide some basic mechanic assistance. Uh, for the rides that are not uh, loop rides, we do offer bus, uh, bus return to the start and we transport your bikes in a large van. And daily we offer luggage transfer too. So you don't have to carry along your luggage um, on those rides. You can uh, trust us to carry it and, and give us an extra heavy load for our van. Uh, we have group socials in the evening. Uh, we also provide very detailed group maps. So you can ride with a group of people. Uh, we, we always start off together. We often make new friends along the way and, and great groups from within, or you can take the maps and ride independently as well. So those are a few things that we include and kind of we want to make our motto just bring your bike and ride. We're going to make it super easy for you to join us and um, have a great weekend riding, not worry about any of the details. Trying to advance my slide, there we go. It's a little bit of a lag. So our first ride this year is the Essex-Windsor Loop. And this is over three days and two overnights in the beginning or middle of June, really. Um, over the three days, we're gonna cover 188 kilometers and that's spread out into three days. So it is quite easy, moderate riding. There is some roads that we have to cover, uh, but it's a really beautiful ride. We last did this one in, and first did it in 2018. So I like starting this little town called Comer. Uh, there's a great B&B guy there and he's a bit of a chef and uh, actually he is a chef. He uh, makes our lunches and we pick those up as we ride along the Lake um, St. Clair waterfront, beautiful scenery and through different cottage lands. And uh, we end our night in Windsor, which is a great city to explore. I really love the waterfront there. Great stream of parks and overlooking to the Detroit skyline is really something special. And uh, maybe a little different this year, a little closer to us to visit, easier for us to visit if we wanted to, but probably not uh, going to happen on this ride because uh, there's not a lot of time once you pull in and you want to have a nice dinner and explore Windsor itself. There's some wonderful neighborhoods there to get some great bites to eat and, and just enjoy the city. Uh, the next day we hop on to the uh, south, uh, the Chrysler Greenway heading south. 
and that goes through a lot of agricultural land for about 49 kilometers past lots of wineries or turnoffs into some great little towns, Kingsville. And uh, we take that all the way into Leamington where we'll overnight. And the next day uh, we make a stop in Point Peely National Park, which you can go all the way down south to the bottom of it and be in the most southern part of, uh, of mainland Canada uh, by doing that. And that's such a scenic, scenic ride. Uh, and then we just loop around and um, finish our ride up in Comer. So that's a nice, easy um, looped ride. We have parking included and uh, lots of amazing sights and two overnights. So that's the first ride of our season. And uh, maybe if you're not already booked, there is space still available on that one. Our next ride is in August, uh, sorry, in July, and that's the Uxbridge Kawartha's Loop. And that's going to happen over two days and one night. Uh, we've hosted this ride, mm, I forget now, maybe like of this version four times and another version where we came up at it from uh, Campbellford. But um, this is one of my favorites and it's super easy to get to for a lot of people, Oxbridge being very uh, well centered in Ontario and um, just a great little town to, to kick off our ride. Uh, this ride's mostly on trails. So uh, we go towards Lindsay for the first overnight and we stay at our great days in uh, Trailside hotel which uh, is very welcoming of all types of cyclists and Lindsay is a fun little town to explore at night. It's also got uh, the Kawartha Dairies outlet, one of their outlets and cute little store there so that's a good way to cool off after a nice day of riding through lots of farmlands and marshes and then the next day we take the trail all the way into Peterborough making a stop. I just got word from our friend Marnie along the trail her and Steve uh, usually welcome our group of cyclists to their beautiful farm. And if you're lucky, Mar uh, Marnie makes us muffins. And then um, we go across Doobie's Bridge, which you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, a photo we love to use because that just captures it so beautiful, this beautiful high up trestle bridge that you can bike over and also stop and see uh, all the nice scenery to the north and south of that gorgeous bridge. Uh, we have lunch in Peterborough at the Silver Snail and from there people can choose to stay in Peterborough and just enjoy the sights and sounds of downtown and the nice waterfront in Peterborough and um, or you can continue on to Lakefield which is just another 15 kilometers and that's all using the trail to get up there and then we have a bus that will pick you up in Lakefield or in Peterborough return you to Uxbridge and our truck will bring your bikes back. So another great weekend and uh, sorry to rattle out about that one, but that one's sold out, but we are, we do have a wait list. And for all our rides, actually, especially our, the rides we've already hosted in past years, you can find the itineraries online. So you can go and take those itineraries and, and do your own version um, as self-supported, of course. So here's some uh, fun little captures of our rides last year. We had a lot of fun and we had some great photographers, professional photographers and bloggers with us. There's Christopher Mitchell down at the bottom left. He was a lot of fun. Um, and Robin and Anne Mar Donna Marie having a beer in the farmer's market that was coincidentally on in Harrow Smith. Um, <laughs> And down at the bottom, uh, the K&P Trail uh, going towards Kingston after great ride day. So our third tour of the year is in August and uh, towards the end of uh, the August month. And that's a Lanark Trail Tour. And that's a new one for us. And we're doing that over three days and two nights. We just couldn't stay there for and only ride for two days. There's just uh, where this ride starts in Cotland Place. It's kind of like a hub of all trails. <laughs> there's trails going to the north, there's trails going to the east and trails going to the south. So the first day we're going to do a little warm up from Carlton Place to Stittsville along the uh, Ottawa Trailway. Check out the new planetary pathway signs that are up that are going to make you feel like you biked as far as outer space. Uh, Stittsville, we can stop at uh, Kathleen Edwards Cafe that we featured in our Cycling in Ontario guide a couple of years ago. Um, great cafe there. And uh, we can turn back, uh, loop back either through the trail or um, taking a road ride that will take us through some quiet country roads and push us out at the Ashton uh, pub, which last time I was there was an incredibly old fashioned 
style English pub. I uh, now here it's a craft brewery uh, in the middle of nowhere, really. <laughs> and then you can easily hop back on the trail. Uh, other destinations, we're going to go up through the Ottawa Recreation Trail through Elmont, which is the cutest little town ever, Pakenham, all their stone buildings um, in their little uh, old downtowns. And the third day, uh, we're going to bike down to Smith Falls, which is on the Rideau Waterway. Um, a, a super town with an amazing lock system that you can just get enthralled with and sit on the banks of the canal and watch life go by. So uh, that's another one of our tours. Um, it is on a wait list right now, but we will have that itinerary online. So you can, uh, again, look that up at some time and you can um, have a look into doing it at your leisure. And the last trail uh, ride we have of the year is the Hamilton uh, Brantford Port Dover trail ride and that's over two days. I'm super excited to ride this one again. We This was one of this I think was our first ride this and the Oxbridge one in 2015 and uh, we haven't been back since. We tried to host it in 2020 and we got we had to cancel it due to COVID. Um, so we're really pleased to go back there. Uh, Brantford is such a, an amazing trail hub town as well. So starting from Dundas, which is part of Hamilton, um, we'll ride across to uh, Brantford for the night. We're going to stop halfway at Hearts Content Farm, where we've stopped before, and uh, they make us a great uh, organic type of lunch, and we're invited to visit the farm if we want, or you can continue cycling, either stopping in Brantford or, or adding a few more, quite a few more kilometers on, but worthy kilometers north to Paris. Um, where you can have a break on a patio overlooking the steep banks down to the Grand River and then um, overnighting back with everybody in Brantford. So that's a, an extra worthy um, 25 or so kilometers to do. And the next day I ride all the way from Brantford down to Port Dover. Um, as I said, Brantford has some amazing trails and uh, we'll be traveling on some of those for a while before hitting some of the other trails that are all interconnected all the way down to the lake shore of Lake Erie where um, you can cool off certainly on the beach and, and I'm sure it'll be wonderful beach weather then, not like it is uh, today and over the past couple of uh, weeks on and off. <laughs> So uh, those are our rides. That one's still available. If you're sitting on the fence about anything, I really encourage you to book soon because um, our rides will be sold out very shortly. So yeah, we want to make it easy for you. Here's some pictures of us again. Uh, I think these are all from last year, some of our groups, uh, keeping it to a smaller size and um, exploring a thousand islands we did last year. Uh, we did the Kingston Cataraki trail. We did a number of other really amazing trails with a lot of great people that joined us to have fun. And uh, there's myself and my colleague Peter down at the bottom. That's uh, the very last day of our very last ride. So Peter deserved his beer at McKinnon Brewery, uh, just north of Bath, Ontario, south of Napanee, as we're finishing our ride for that year. So we just came out with our uh, new Cycling in Ontario, Lavello on Ontario guide. So if you don't get enough ideas from tonight, um, hop onto our website and you can download a copy, see it online or order your own print copy because there's lots of a wonderful information and that's, uh, that's going to be our 10th uh, publication, bigger than better than ever. So uh, have a look at that um, when you want. So just to leave you with some information about Ontario by Bike, uh, we are a nonprofit organization run by a transportation options. Um, we really work with all the destinations around Ontario to develop and promote bicycle tourism. And we also have a large program that certifies businesses as bicycle friendly. So there's currently over 1500 of those businesses in almost every single region in Ontario. So if you're out and about, um, consult our website, look up some businesses that you might be able to find along the way uh, that are bicycle friendly and uh, make sure you stop in them and, and support their businesses because many of our tourism businesses, businesses in general have had a very hard time over the past uh, couple of years, that's for sure. So these businesses, you can provide a variety of different services depending on what type of business they are. Um, secure bike lockup to healthy food, rest areas, bike repair toolkit if they are accommodations. 
So on our website, we just got a new website that uh, was launched um, last November and uh, necessary upgrades to some of our backend information, which makes it a better a visitor and user experience for yourselves. So you can find all kinds of maps there on different cycling routes. Uh, you can find all those businesses that are bicycle friendly and the itineraries. And we're really pleased. We just uh, launched a new event calendar and we're actually even more pleased than having a new digital camera. Uh, calendar is the fact that um, events can now resume in, in Ontario, and I know there's so many amazing event um, hosts out there, and it's a great way to see a new destination by signing up for an event, and some of them are um, supporting very worthy causes. So uh, check out our new events calendar on our website and consider not only participating in one of our, our rides this year or uh, those held on Manitoulin Island or by Humdinger, but also um, many of the other um, options here in Ontario as well. So I'll leave you with that and, and there's all our information. Make sure you're signed up to our newsletter because that's the way you hear about our rides first up as they're announced in March. Um, there's lots of other ways to contact us uh, and you can stay in contact obviously in social media. And we're um, super excited also to invite you to come and visit us at some of the shows that we're gonna be going to once again. It's been a couple of years since we've seen some of you um, and uh, we're gonna be kicking that off this uh, April and uh, certainly looking forward to going back to the Outdoor Adventure Show. We haven't been there for a number of years. It will be our first time at the Paris to Ancaster race, which is a huge event that draws over 2,000 people. And um, it's a lot of gravel riding and a real adventure ride. And um, new this year is the Ride for Brain Health. And uh, that's uh, going to be on the Don Valley Parkway in Toronto at the beginning of June. So we'll be at all those events. Uh, come and find our Ontario Cycle Tourism Information booth or uh, get in touch sooner. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for that, Louisa. That was great. Um, I just need to share my screen. Um, helpful as always, um, and lots of options for you all to uh, get out there and cycle this summer. Um, next, we're going to hear from... Uh, Maya. Uh, who's going to talk about Manitoulin cycling adventures. You should be able to share your screen. Looks good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, Maya, you're on mute. Yeah, that didn't help. Welcome to all of our cycle tour adventures, everybody. Um, my name is Maya Mielemann. I'm the president of the Manitoulin Island Cycling Advocates um, called PICA. Uh, we are a non-for-profit organization, completely volunteer driven. Let me showcase you uh, what you will experience cycling on Manitoulin, the largest freshwater island in the world. Discover the heart of the Great Lakes, surrounded by sparkling turquoise clean water and breeze in the air that caresses the 108 inland lakes. Did you? Yeah. Hmm. We have in traffic now. Yeah. There you go. I think it has a delay. So we're pressing it a little earlier. <laughs> then we're getting on the road. Um, Manitoulin can be reached uh, two different ways. One is from the north 
uh, turning south on Highway 6, approaching from Sudbury, Susemery, Timmins. Some come from Ottawa that way. And uh, one of our early guests um, came all the way from out west. And But I believe she arrived by ferry. Not sure, or left by ferry. Um, you will enter Manitoulin over the century-old Swing Bridge. You can book a night before the tour starts here in Little Current and drive 64 kilometers to South Bay Mouse in the morning. Or you can choose to book uh, the Sunday night in South Bay Mouse and be ready for Monday morning ride start. Uh, we have free uh, parking on the South Bay Mouse side for your car. The second option um, is taking the passage ride from Tobomori onto the northern tip of the Bruce Peninsula via the MS Chichiman, our ferry coming from uh, to South Bay Mouse. Parking is available in the, on the Tobomori, uh, Tobomori side on the Tobomori Ferry Terminal for a fee. If you're um, intended to take your vehicle over to South Bay Mouse with the ferry, you must be at the ferry 60 minutes before departure or you may you lose your reservation. The ferry is run under federal jurisdiction and falls currently under COVID mandates, federal uh, COVID mandates. So you will have to make sure that you inform yourself with the ferry uh, what they may be at your departure date since we've experienced so many changes in all those mandates. Highway 6 has a wonderful paved wide shoulder and is for the most part um, not very busy. Um, we will start the first day after the ferry traffic has left South Bay Mouse and uh, there's only 60 people living in South Bay Mouse, so you can imagine how, um, how uh, wonderfully quiet the road is after the ferry tra traffic has left. Um, our groups are small. Uh, sometimes we have one. Most often we have somewhere between eight and 16 riders. We recommend you to come with a road bike, perhaps with skater skin, uh, tires, or a hybrid or a cross cycle. It is uh, best because we're a rural area to bring a tube and a tire that fits your cycle, just to uh, makes, makes fixing your flat so much easier for our guys. Our average kilometer per day on a long tour is 60 and our average um, on the short is about 40 kilometers a day. 10 mile point is certainly one of the highlights on the first day of the long tour dates. This spectacular vista is overlooking the northern part of Georgian Bay into the North Channel on the left and the Lacloche Mountains standing off the, uh, in, the, in the background. This looks like a long road, but the part in the back is actually a different road. <laughs> it is a wonderful descent though of two kilometers that you will um, enjoy after 10 mile point. It leads like right into one of the oldest indigenous settlements in Nor of North America and the remnants of the old settler town in Chiquinda. The island is sitting on limestone and supports a completely different ecosystem than found in a Norse off island on the Canadian Shield. Manitoulin has two breweries one is called Split Trail. They're operating out of Gore Bay on the west end of the island and Manitoulin Brewing as seen here out of Little Current. The first night after the, on the long tour, you will stay uh, in this wonderful little, uh, one, not little, wonderful hotel and conference center. This is the lobby that you see in Little Current. And there you will enjoy dinner and breakfast your first day. The second day you will be rolling out of Little Current. You can see the swing bridge again in the background and are heading um, towards the um, North Shore. Manitoulin is known Canada right now as a wonderful cycling destination. Safety infrastructure in the form of paved shoulders are found on three out of our four provincial highways. Local traffic has become a custom to um, coexist with our cyclists on the road. And many businesses, as Luisa said, are cycle friendly due to her untiring uh, commitment to make Ontario uh, cycle friendly. 
Um, our municipalities are also working with us hand in hand since 12 years and all in other, all you can really consider Manitoulin and cycling friendly. After climbing out of Little Current a few short hills, we don't have really big hills, um, the highest elevation is the cup and saucer, um, you'll be rewarded with a long rolling uh, downhill. Um, it's one of my favorite vistas. It looks way into the North Channel, way into the West, and um, on a sunny day, sometimes the water is specked with uh, sail, white sails. Lunch breaks are scheduled near water, overlooking, um, overlooking or overlooking water. Sometimes you will order lunch from a menu um, of a restaurant. Sometimes it's a um, set menu and that offers regular vegetarian or vegan fare. We will ask you to indicate these preferences uh, um, and or allergies um, as you book with OK Cycle with for our tours so that we can serve you accordingly. Manitoulin is a birding destination. Many species live here year round, but even more we see in spring and fall when our migrating birds choose Manitoulin to um, fulfill their nutritional needs before they continue their long journeys. You will no li most likely see hundreds of sandhill cranes in the fields and be surprised how majestic their size is and how loud their call. Sharing the road among many road users like these Amish folks here on Manitoulin is a common sight. Um, we see a lot of cyclists, we see a lot of Amish, we have um, some traffic of course and also some trucks, but um, uh, Manitoulin is no throughway at all for the cross Canada trucking industry because we are literally you only end up on Manitoulin if you want to be on Manitoulin because either you have to go um, nearly 45 minutes south of the Trans-Canada or you have to take the ferry. The Cup and Saucer Trail, one of the most visited trails in Ontario, is part of the Niagara, Niagara Escarpment. It's the highest spot on Manitoulin of about 352 meters above sea level. Like I said, we don't have really mountains, but we do have rolling hills. Um, on the long um, and on the short, we have a hike and bike day planned. So the June 13 to 17 offers that, that's um, sold out. But the September short tour, September 19th to 23rd, also offers a hike and bike um, day. A bag lunch will be served on top, overlooking the impressive limestone cliff and way into the di distant um, vistas overlooking several lakes. Um, it's quite beautiful up there. Over 32 orchids call Manitoulin home. Spring is when you will see carpets of trilliums and they are, um, yeah, just absolutely beautiful. The lady slippers bloom in early to mid-June, and that is also the time when Micah holds our Manitoulin Passage ride. This year um, should have been in 2020, but it's now our 10th anniversary. Um, it's a two-day fully uh, uh, supported ride. When you come to Manitoulin, no matter what time of the year, um, other than winter, of course, um, you see fields of flowers. In the daisy time, they're white like a white carpet. Um, we have yellow fields, orange lady um, uh, paintbrushes, um, just a, a, a pure joy to see and smell. And often you see families of deers in it because we have more deers than residents. The longest day of your journey uh, with us will be is jam-packed full of unforgettable experience. Um, that day showcases our, our indigenous neighbors. You will see examples of a medicine garden, a sweat lodge, visit you know, uh, the Ojibwe Cultural Foundation with, with its uh, exquisite um, uh, displays and, and storytelling as well. Um, we will visit a small museum that has a beautiful um, pottery, beading and pork porcupine quilt art exhibit, and it's also a souvenir 
uh, has lots of souvenir opportunities when it comes to indigenous art. Um, you will read some of the stories and of course our guide will take anything you buy uh, uh, carefully uh, back to your accommodations so that you don't necessarily have to um, worry about it and um, can ride penye free. Kagawan, also called one of Ontario's prettiest town and ham or hamlets, is the home of the Bridal Whale Falls. Here, the smelts are caught in spring and the sweetwater salmon run in the fall. In winter, the falls are a spectacular sight that you can explore and look through when you walk to the back from behind the falls. Our famous photographer called Peter Baumgartner um, a year ago did this spectacular photo. Uh, he lit the falls up from behind. And it, this year, that year, um, the formation, it was, like a, it was like a tunnel or a castle. Or every year, the formation is different, of course, depending on the flow of the falls, but quite spectacular in the winter as well. The last thing you will be you're indulging yourself in that jam pack day is a visit to our oldest, one of our oldest settler farms, now the home of an alpaca farm called Cookaburra. And it will round up that day in a very soft, cuddly way. Olvar, the name of our tour, is found in four places in the world, one of which is Manitoulin. There is several different Alvars and you will get to know all of those specifics uh, from our guides. And the plants there that are found are very fragile and very rare. Of course, we cannot leave Manitoulin without visiting the, long, uh, the longest sand beach on Manitoulin in Providence Bay. You will visit uh, one of the best galleries um, in Ontario on that day and have a chance to lunch uh, along the lake here, um, uh, enjoy the boardwalk and um, just the vista of Lake Huron. It looks to me, it, I was coming from Europe years and years ago um, and the sight of such an expanse of water that isn't ocean, um, was quite quite lovely. No critters in the water. It lends itself beautiful to take a dip. And it's warm, in, especially in the fall. Quiet country roads are common and you will see many of them and ride along many of them where you smell the lilacs and the fresh cut hay in spring, the sweet smell of wild roses and thyme in the summer and seeing the vibrant red maple colors uh, and oak colors in fall. Home baking and healthy snacks along the road uh, will be remembered with a smile and um, the taste buds uh, will be full of memories. Laughter and stories, of course, make for lasting friendships and great memories to take home. We get a lot of uh, um, people writing us back and, and telling friends and it's always for us very gratifying when we see that our tour participants and cyclists in general leave Manitoul and with a big smile of what they've seen and smelled and heard and touched and ate. Good food is served with a smile by our guy, uh, uh, by our guys and here you see one of them called Guy. Um, here you see in the background one of the cottages uh, that um, some of you will stay in. And um, in the evening, it's always nice when our participants can sit on the picnic benches right close to the lake that you can't see here because I wanted to show the cottages in a photo, but um, it's uh, they're they're looking into the west, and the sunsets are remarkable um, from that from all three cottages, uh, all four cottages that are there. So our accommodations are lakeside cottages or a wonderful um, B and B, best in class B and B, and uh, 
at the cottages, you will have a choice to pick um, out or mark what, what you like for breakfast and you will prepare it yourself. Where at the B&B, that is not at the lake, um, but very beautiful as well, you will be served breakfast. So there's the two choices. If you would like to rent an e-bike, we can now offer that as well. Our five-day e-bike rental price is $350 up above your price um, of the tour. And the batteries have a 65 kilometer range, which is sufficient for most days. For the days that are a little longer, you wouldn't have to be worried at all because where our lunch is uh, scheduled, there is another charging station which can accommodate the bike and give you the extra boost should you need it. You will, of course, receive our Manitoulin Island and La Cloche Mountain Routes and Roadmap 6th edition that was printed in 2022. And you also will receive daily itineraries. Um, so far, we run with paper itineraries and digital, but I think we're moving, as everybody else, away from paper more and more, and it will be probably provided digitally for many that are familiar and comfortable with it. The, our guide will be with you every day by car. Um, it, he will carry your extra tubes and tires that you will may need, let's hope not, and transport your souvenirs, as I mentioned before, um, back to your accommodation and just be there for you when you need them. And as we said, sweet water, sweet water everywhere you look. Um, the westerly winds that are uh, predominant on Manitoulin uh, are preventing us from being bug ridden, um, much more so than um, we have far less bugs than what you would experience in most of northern Ontario. Um, we also have the same amount of or record the same amount of sunshine as California. Now that is not a promise, <laughs> but it is a meteorological fact. Um, so thank you very much, OK Cycle, for giving us this opportunity again this year to provide uh, to showcase what we have to offer. Um, our all of our Cycle Tour um, all inclusive packages. Um, please find the details on manitoulincycling.com. And we're very much looking forward to hearing from you. And if you have questions, and the booking is of course through our friends, um, OK Cycle. So thank you very much. Thank you for that. I'm now hungry and I want to go for a bike ride. <laughs> um, we're now going to move on to our final speaker. That is Sarah from Humdinger Tours. Um, and she's going to tell us about what they have going on this summer. Uh, it's all yours, Sarah. Thanks. Thanks, Judy. Here I go. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And um, thanks to uh, Louisa and Maya for um, showing us that cycling is in Ontario is awesome. I know we all know that because that's why we're here. And always thanks to OK Cycle. They are supportive of all of us who are um, working on uh, bringing cycle tourism to to Ontario so yay and I just um, I want to start by um, uh, talking a little bit about an overview of the regions that we run in um, in with Humdinger um, I'm right now in Oro Medonte Township which I, I don't know if you know or not we're situated between Barrie and Aurelia um, with uh, Lake Simcoe as our, as our southern border. And I operate um, in a radius sort of 100 to 150 kilometers from our home base in Bruce Gray Simcoe and up to Perry Sound, Muskoka and into Halliburton. So just for a little bit of context, there's Ottawa about four and a half to five hours away. Toronto's about an hour and a half and um, Buffalo Niagara is about two and a half to three hours away from, from where we are. 
Um, we have a full range of bicycle touring options at Humdinger. We run trips that are short, two-day trips. We also run longer six-day trips. Um, we have fully guided tours that uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more about later. And we have self-guided supported tours where we carry your luggage, but you, you find your way on your own with maps. Um, as Maya said, electronic and paper maps and moving more towards electronic as, as the years go on. And we cater to a wide range of cycling skills. So we have tours geared to novice and intermediates and um, a couple that are a little bit more advanced. And we do also specialize in custom tours. So we can modify what you see tonight if, if it doesn't quite work for you. We do like to work directly with clients to, um, to customize a, a, an experience that works best for you and your group. Um, we've done longer up to 12 day tours as custom. So um, yeah, we, we, we can do pretty much anything <laughs> within reason on a custom tour. And we do occasionally uh, go outside of our um, central Ontario region for custom tours. But we do love to showcase our home turf um, in the uh, Simcoe Muskoka area. That is our specialty. So um, I'm, I'm going to take you through our signature tour, the Georgian Bay Muskoka six day tour, spend a little bit more time on that. And then I'll go just very quickly through the other tours we have on option. So this is six days, five nights. It's fully guided and supported. So we have a cycling guide on the road with you, as well as a guide in a support vehicle. Um, the tours are all inclusive, uh, meals and snacks, uh, three meals and snacks and refreshments, water refills. Of course, we do luggage transfer. And we do have very small groups as well as the other tours have talked about. We, we operate generally with less than 10 people on a tour and really spend a lot of time on um, giving individual guests a lot of personal attention. On this Georgian Bay Muskoka tour, you begin in Collingwood, Blue Mountains area where you leave your cars for the week um, and we shuttle you to Perry Sound. And we have a little bit of a soft start in Perry Sound. We might go to the bike store. We might go to the port, uh, depending on the group, um, get changed into bike clothes, make sure we're, we're fed and watered and the bikes fit properly. And then we have a nice um, relaxing ride from Perry Sound down into Muskoka, um, into Port Carling. And we land at Sherwood Inn on Lake Joseph, which is a very traditional um, Muskoka Inn that um, they're, they're becoming further and fewer between the traditional inns that have full meal service and recreational activities, uh, water sports and tennis courts and all of those things. So Sherwood Inn has all of that. This is their part of their lovely waterfront. They also have a nice sand beach. We spend two nights at Sherwood Inn um, and use it for a base for a little bit of cycling in Muskoka. We do on our second day um, a loop of Lake Rosso, which is a fabulous ride. It's about 65 kilometers and it um, features the shores of, of Lake Rosso and a little bit of Lake Joseph and your typical Muskoka rock cuts and forests and water. Um, it's mostly on quite quiet roads. And we, when we do spend a little bit of time on a, on a busier road, it has a, a very nice wide shoulder. It's a little bit of a challenging ride, but it's the sort of ride that people feel really good about at the end of the day. It feels like an accomplishment. And we end the day in Port Carling on a, um, uh, waterfront terrace for lunch and refreshments. From Port Carling, we make our way south out of the Canadian Shield and into some more pastoral farmland um, in Severn Township. 
And then we actually wind our way back north again, um, up along the Severn River by the Big Chute Marine Railway, back into the Canadian Shield. And we follow that down to Port Severn where the Severn River joins Georgian Bay. At um, Port Severn, we stay at Raleigh Resort for a couple of nights and use that as a base. The next day we have a little bit of a break because we've had our hilly ride on day two and then a little bit of a longer ride on day three. So we have a short ride um, on day four in the middle of the week and we go out to Beausoleil Island, which is part of the Georgian Bay Islands National Park. Um, and uh, we do ride our bikes to get there. Once we get there, we do a little hiking, a little swimming. Uh, on occasion, we have rented fat bikes to tour around the island and just really have a little bit of a change of pace from the first few days of the tour. Following that, we leave Port Severn and we travel through Wabashine, Midland, uh, down to Bomb Beach, and then we follow the shores of Georgian Bay again along the tiny beaches and Wasega Beach into Collingwood and into the Blue Mountains. And when we land back in Collingwood in the Blue Mountains, you're reunited with your car. Um, we have a uh, um, a day there on day six where you can explore on your own the Niagara Scarpment. You can stick along the bottom and keep it flat, or if you have a little bit of juice left in your legs, you can climb up and over the escarpment. So our dates for this year, we have July dates and August dates for that trip. Um, another one of our fully guided and um, supported tours is our lovely Bruce and Gray Peninsula tour, Port Elgin, Bruce Peninsula and South Georgian Bay. Um, you could probably connect that with a, a Manitoulin Island tour with Maya at some point, if you really wanted to extend your cycling holiday. Um, this one, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but it's very similar to the Georgian Bay Muskoka with um, six days and five nights. Some of, the, some of the places we stay a couple of nights to um, be able to explore the area a little bit further. We do get up into the Bruce Peninsula, mostly exploring on the East Georgian Bay side. And um, it's, just, it's just quite a lovely, lovely tour. Uh, there's a little bit of Bruce Peninsula, some lighthouses. It's, um, if you haven't been on the Bruce Peninsula, it's quite, stunning and uh, it's, it's worth a visit for sure. Um, if you're looking to be a little bit more independent, we have some longer self-guided tours. So some five and six days self-guided tours where we carry your luggage and we give you route maps, but you, you ride on your own. There's no guide riding with you. So this one is called the Simple Loop Trail plus Georgian Bay and Severn. We just call it the Simple Loop Trail plus and it is a mix of gravel rail trail and nice quiet country roads. What you see on the map there is the Simcoe Loop Trail that goes through Barrie, Midland and Aurelia. And on this trip, we've added on uh, a couple of loops. This left ear loop is up to Owenda Provincial Park, which is north of Penetang. And the right ear loop goes up to the Big Chute Marine Railway that I talked a little bit about on the Georgian Bay Muskoka tour. Um, so this is done over five days. It's very relaxed riding, um, mostly flat, about, about 50 to 60 kilometers a day. And um, just a really nice mix of urban and rural going through the cities and then um, spending a lot of time in the countryside and lakefront as well. There's beautiful downtown Barrie, which is on the, uh, on the Simcoe Loop Trail. Another self-guided option is a Muskoka to Halliburton uh, ride. This one is six days and self-guided, and it is an advanced tour. Uh, the distances do get up to close to 100 a day, not every day, but a couple of days. And it, it is hilly. It doesn't look hilly in this picture. This is a nice flat uh, section of road along Lake Kashigawigamog in Halliburton. Um, but this tour would, would give you a little bit of a challenge. 
Um, it's absolutely stunning riding out of um, starting in Huntsville, doing the Lake of Bays loop, um, riding down into Bracebridge and uh, uh, and then landing in Halliburton for a couple of days. So if you want to challenge yourself a little bit, that's one worth trying. We also have a four day option for that. Um, second here, my slide isn't quite wanting to advance for some reason. There we go. Um, so we have a number of shorter tours as well. I'm not going to go into them tonight, um, but they're all on our website, which I'll show you at the end. We have some three and four day options. This particular one is a two day option. And these are nice because they're on weekends. Um, it's called Petal Pints and Pubs Aurelia. It's part guided and part self-guided. It's been very popular. It's very accessible to, um, all ranges of cyclists. The, the first day is a guided sightseeing tour of Aurelia, which is full of uh, wonderful historic sites. Um, and it ends at Kuchiching Craft Brewery in downtown Aurelia, where you get lunch and beer included. And then your hotel is just like two minutes, maybe one minute away from the brewery. Very convenient. And um, we, on the second day, send you out to Quails Brewery in Oral Madani Township, the township I live in. Um, it's only a couple of years old, but it's a very fun destination. It's a hops farm and um, brewery and restaurant all together. Um, and people go out there on a self-guided route that can be longer or shorter, depending on what they want to do, and then have lunch and beer. And we bring people back. So when we have beer tastings on our trips, um, we don't pop you back on your bike afterwards. We, we, you're either at the hotel or we, we drive you home. And as I've mentioned, we do custom tours so you can build your own tour. If you've seen something that is of interest, but it doesn't quite match your needs, let, let us know and we'll work to build something that works for you. And just a little bit of a um, reminder, two fully guided tours that are uh, include a, a cycling guide and a support vehicle, Georgian Bay, Muskoka and Port Elgin, Bruce Peninsula and South Georgian Bay. Two longer self-guided options, Simcoe Loop Trail Plus and Muskoka to Halliburton. And then an example of a, of a shorter fun weekend trip, the uh, Pedal Pints and Pubs Aurelia which has several dates available. There's our contact information. And thank you for taking time this evening to listen to me and, and my colleagues. And of course, once again, thanks to OK Cycle for being super supportive of all of us um, running cycle tours in Ontario. Thank you, Sarah. Um, thank you, everyone. It's been a very informative evening. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay, if nobody has any questions, um, then I will just say thank you to everyone for coming. Um, I don't know if Mandy wants to say anything before we sign off or I just want to uh, thank everyone for uh, for taking the time to watch uh, uh, Lisa, Maya, and Sarah, and uh, we're there to sort of encourage and answer questions as well. So if you have some questions, we, we, we're happy to to pass them on or answer them directly. Um, it's there's a say there's lots of custom options that are available in Ontario. And any of those uh, that anyone wants any assistance with, we're there to help make it happen. We want to encourage as much cycling as possible, whether it's in Ontario or the rest of the world, because we do offer tours all around the world. So thank you very much for everyone for coming and, and watching this. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a great summer for cycling. And now that, that uh, a lot of the restrictions are lifted. It's, it's back to, to having a great, wonderful time. So enjoy, be safe, be careful. Good night. Thanks, Manny. Good night, everybody.
Cheers. Thank you. Happy cycling. Yeah. Thank you.